Mike and his wife kind of start reminiscing about stories about you guys. Somehow you ended up in the same rehab. Somehow Suge Knight came up somewhere. When the guy told me Suge was at the door, I said, okay, cool. I didn't think, I thought he came to see Bobby. Right? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he came to see Bobby. So I was like, all right, cool, man. Did Suge come to break you out or something? Suge was throwing shit over the gate. <laughs> Suge was trying to I don't get, believe that. He was think? trying to get shit really? to him. Smoking cannabis doesn't have to hurt. For the coolest and smoothest cannabis smoking experience, you need a freezeable pipe, bubbler, bong, a dab rig from Freeze Pipe. The secret is, Mike, freezeable glycerin chambers that mm. come in every piece. Look at this, Mike. Pop one of these chambers in the freezer for one hour. And as smoke passes through it, it instantly is chilled by over 300 degrees. So icy, man. The result is a bigger, smoother hit with zero chest or throat burn. Cough less and enjoy an easier way to smoke cannabis with these glass pipes. All right. Glycerin is a non-toxic fatty gel commonly mm. found in food and sweeteners. It freezes quicker than water and stays frozen longer, Mike. You That's may have bullshit. tried putting ice in your bong before, but having smoke pass through a frozen glycerin chamber, Mike, will change how you light up forever, yo. Yo, dig, right? You can do it this way. Pipes, bubblers, bongs, dab rigs, and more at thefreezepipe.com. Get 10% off at thefreezepipe.com with the promo code HOTBOXING, right? And again, that's 10% off thefreezepipe.com. Promo code hot boxing, baby. Okay, welcome to another episode of Hot Boxing. I'm Mike Tyson. I'm Matt Barnes. And today we have the quintessential entertainer, Bobby Brown. Hey, 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 hey. Yo, Bobby, you know remember when we were in Japan? I remember. That's Japan. okay. I got my ass kicked. <laughs> but, um, it was I cried. I cried. I cried. The so whole, did I. <laughs> Joined I cried the, club. the whole time, man. You know. But that's that was okay. That was a while ago, though. You learn more, you earn more. Right? That's true. You learn more, you earn more. Talk to me, man, about your women, your escapades with your women, man. They have it on here, man. I don't know. I don't I don't know what, I, what, what, you, said, what you This is what they're talking about. What are they um, talking Janet about? Janet Jackson, the crush of his life, the new documentary, full ho. I call what? The crush of my life? What the f up with that, man? She's the crush of your life. She was the crush of my life. Uh I had a crush on her when I first started out, you know, you know, first got into the business as a solo artist. I felt like, you know. Janet was supposed to be mine. Mm, that's a powerful statement. That's what I felt. You were the baddest motherfucker on the scene back in 88, 87, back then. And that's not even counting when you was a little baby, how you broke all the records, man. Man. What, what, what happened? It's like when I see some of my fights, I said, what happened? It was just like a, a blink and it's over. Mm. Yeah, your fights were pretty much you know, that quick. I'm talking quick. about my life as a fighter. You know, there's a whole <laughs> life. Like I'm a young guy there talking now I'm an older guy, I have a show, I'm selling cannabis, and I'm fighting with my wife, and I'm letting my kids have the best, and it's just, that's life. <laughs> oh, that's my yeah. life. That's how you're supposed to do it, you're supposed uh, to grow. Bobby Brown, a new documentary, A.E., Bobby Brown. Tell me more about that. The documentary is basically, was basically about my, my whole being as uh from from birth to to where I stand now, um, it was what I've been through: the drugs, the alcohol, the jail time, the 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 women, the women, and then there was more women. So it was it was it was basically about that. But um, I'm glad we got a chance to do it because for me that was therapy. You know, it was therapeutic for me to be able to to go back to all of those times and, and, and bring it out into the forefront so that I could get over over all of the shit that, that has happened to me in my life. How did you get over, because I'm sure a lot of men, whether you be athlete, entertainer, you can pretty much pick and choose whatever woman you want. At one point, you felt like you had a sex addiction. How did you, did you seek help for that or just mentally battle through that and get to the other side? I mentally battled through it. Um, I, I learned more about myself and I learned more about 
what uh, a relationship is about, what a um, what contact with a woman means. You know, it doesn't mean just always sex. Right. You know, um, so I had to learn that for myself, uh, and I had to learn how to love love myself. First Even and more, foremost. you know, First I had to f- foremost, right? I had to f- find out what love was about in order to you know get through all of the you know bullshit. What's your, what's your perspective of love? My perspective of love is being able to being able to love somebody without concern, without having a mm. having a um, uh, a mental block. Ever, you know, always being able to to know that that person has your back no matter what. I can dig that. Some people's death is the most direct and slowest form of suicide. You know, yes, um, that's a form of just what you say, ride or die. Right, jump off the um, cliff together. I don't know. That's 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 really powerful. Sacrifice. I guess that's what it's all about. Life is about sacrifice. I do this. Um, this psychedelic is. Um, it's called the Toad, Sidorian mm-hmm. Toad, right? And um, it teaches you um, that dying is not bad. How could life be good and death be bad? Why would God put us on this planet? We don't want to be here, and we're here to be afraid to die. Yeah. You know. You told me about that a few times. Um, yes, so. You told me that I shouldn't. I, <laughs> I shouldn't try the shit though. If you're not, if you don't want to change, don't try it. Mm. What about ayahuasca? Um, Is that ayahuasca a little deeper. Is good, but ayahuasca's doing work. Sometimes okay. I did work um, last time when I went to Colombia. Okay. The work is hard. I like yeah. to go. I like to take the tour where it takes you straight there. Mm. No work. Wow, you're there, baby. <laughs> <laughs> don't care who you are. Don't gotta go through all this process. Just straight. Bow. Yeah, I've done ayahuasca a few times. Um, and it, it is it is work. You on know? the other side, um, how did you feel on the other side? Because it's something um, I've always wanted to, to try. Well, I was going through I was going through losing my daughter mm. when I first tried it, and um, that was something that I couldn't never have imagined. Um, losing twice, I lost twice. I lost my ex wife and I lost my daughter, in in such a way where it was so similar. You know, it, it just made me. It made me, you know, nervous about how I was gonna go, mm. and um, but trying it, it just made me realize, you know, all of the all of the all of the things that I was missing out on in life wow. and not paying attention to, and um, what I needed to pay attention to that was gonna heal me. And um, that that was part of love, you know, mm-hmm. me finding out what I loved and who I loved and why I loved the person that I loved. So that's how ayahuasca made me feel. I've learned love is everything. <coughs> yep. Love is war, mm-hmm. knowing that you got my back, he has mm-hmm. your back, he got the, everybody got everybody back and we're going to fight to the death, that's love too. Mm-hmm. The whole world love. Whether you know it or not. Mm-hmm. Yes. Can't exist without it. No. You were someone who, from an early age, was on the biggest stage you can ever imagine. That was crazy. Going through that in your life, pretty much always being an open book, was it tough for you when you guys decided to do the reality show that kind of opens up your complete family dynamic, your new show that's out right now? No, that wasn't tough because um, I feel that's also therapeutic. Okay. Um, for me to be able to open open up and, and and let people in to see how I'm coping with what what life has thrown at me. Um, sometimes they come speed balls, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying, really fast, and you just have to really really recognize that um, that life is is it, it, something we all have to live, and we're all gonna have to give up at one time. Right, so a blink of the eye. In the blink of an eye, it's it's, it's over. Life in the blink you know what I'm saying? Um, but no, it just it just it just it just made me made me really love who I am as a person today. You know, being able to put myself in in the position where people can 
watch what I'm going through on an everyday basis. And I don't think, too, sometimes you realize, like, obviously it's therapeutic for you, but it's also for the rest of the world who's watching mm -hmm. because they're going through similar shit just without a platform, without a voice. You know what I mean? So you're their voice as well. Yeah, thank you. Thank yeah. you. I appreciate that. <clears throat> can see that big time. So, Bobby... Yes. Tell us some more shit, man. Tell us some more shit. Aw, man, why are you playing, man? Tell me this, Bobby. Man. Right, listen, listen. We're going to get serious for a minute, right? Let's just get serious for a minute. So tell us about this Woody McCarron guy. Didn't he play you before? He played me in the New Edition story. Did, yeah. And um, I did. felt he did such a great job. I'm so happy because, listen, my, when my son met you, he, was, he expected to meet this guy. Right. <laughs> he said, that's not Bobby Brown. He said, that's not Bobby said, that's Brown. that's not Bobby Brown. <laughs> yeah, my son said, that's not Bobby Brown. He, he expected he to see that guy. He was expected to see Woody. Yeah, Woody yeah. was the Hellraiser in that movie. Yeah, he was. So listen, the first time I really met Bobby, I was, I was training for a fight. I was around 19 years old, and New Edition was performing in, in the Dome, you know, where the college is at. Mm -hmm. mm. And then while they were performing, at the end of the show, you came out and did, Girlfriend. Uh -huh. Yeah. That's the first time I met you. What That's... was that dynamic really like, though? Because after you kind of broke free, it's kind of crazy for me, first of all, because I mean, I'm just a, such a huge fan of both y'all and grew up on your guys. It was but... legendary, though. When he left, Thank everybody you. thought he was going to die. Everybody said, he's nothing. But he then, then he came drugs. back and then became he the king. He tore the world to your feet. Yeah. <laughs> he came back as the king. Man. That's what I'm saying. So what, what, what was that like? Obviously, you had a vision for yourself, but what was it like kind of going back and forth sometimes, doing stuff with them, not, but then kind of excelling on your own? Well, I had to first, free. first and foremost... Before New Edition, I was a solo act. Before I put New Edition together, I was solo. Okay. So, so how's I, was used, I was used to being a solo artist. I wanted to be a solo artist getting into this industry. But um, it just so happened that me putting the group together got me to where I needed to be. Mm -hmm. And we all know when you get to this place that you need to be, it's either you 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 win or you lose. And I had no reason to to be in the group anymore because I had gotten to the place that I wanted to right. be. And I wanted to be free of of the bubblegum candy um shit that they was putting out there. Some grown man shit. Yeah, I mm -hmm. wanted to do some, what I'd like to do. Right. That's not how um, they betrayed you on the show. No, it's not. Just putting it out there, brother. <laughs> How is that, though, when you see like a betrayal that, that, that's not, would you say the betrayal was accurate of you or not? Of new in edition, the New Edition in movie? In the New Edition movie. Um... Some parts were was was exactly how I was, you know, responding to everything that everybody, you know, was doing, and I was doing the opposite. Um, the doing drugs part, I was selling drugs. I wasn't doing drugs. Remember the story? He cooked the chicken with the drug, the cocaine. I didn't hear that story. I read that story too. Ah. Uh, <laughs> If you go through the book, um, there's a story about when I was younger, my mother used to deal. She used to um, keep the Coke in the freezer in a plastic bag. And I thought it was flour. Mm. I, didn't, I didn't know it was, mm -hmm. you know. So you got that bird all I, I got it, yeah, flowered up. I got it up. all flowered up. And How old were you? I was about nine. Oh, shit. About nine Eight, nine years old, I called myself, you know, cooking for the right. family. You know, I was... You the only one at eight, huh? I was the only one at eight. <laughs> <laughs> I was dead had to rush me to the hospital. <laughs> no shit, Bobby. Was yeah, it good before it hit, book, though? Did the chicken the taste book. good? Like, do you remember? The chicken, like, was, the chicken was bomb. Bomb. It had to be bomb. bomb. shit was bomb. melting in your mouth. It was just... It was just... <laughs> too much. They came in the house, and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I was I was paranoid and scared at the same time oh, and shit, Bobby. hot beating Bobby. out of my chest. I mean, all jokes aside, though, like that's like I, I remember my, so my 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 dad sold too, and I remember we lived two houses down from my little best friends at the time, and there was this brother and sister, and I remember they knocked the coke off the big plate of coke off the dresser and started eating it off the floor, and like went into comas and started foaming. So I ran back and told our like it that like they really almost that died. So I'm sure similarly he could have really. I like been gone. Yeah. For real. Ooh. Oh, shit. For real, for real. <clears throat> That's early OD. Right. 
Wasn't meant to be. No, it wasn't. Thank God. Hang Thank God. God. Me. It's, 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 it's truly. Listen, man. There's no test. There's no testimony. That's true. Right. You overcame adversity. Adversity only makes the weak weak and the strong stronger. Smooth Sack Summer is slowly coming to an end, fellas. And as we enter fall, keep your boys clean and fresh for a fresh ball fall. The leaders in the Below the Belt grooming is here to make sure that you feel smooth and smell fresher than your girl's pumpkin spice. The Manscaped Perform Package at 4.0 has everything you need. Inside this package, you find their Lawn Mower 4.0 Trimmer, Weed Whacker, Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer, Crop Preserver, Ball Deodorant Crop Reviver, Ho Ho Toner Performance, Boxer Briefs, and a Travel Bag. This Lawn Mower 4.0 Trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents. The Lawn Mower 4.0 has a 7,000 RPM motor and a new multi function on and off switch that can engage your travel block and gives you the ability to turn the 4,000K. LED spotlight on and off when needed for a more precise shave. Did I mention this trimmer is waterproof too? Also, I'm lather up with the Manscaped liquid formula to get that freshness. The crop preserver, the ball deodorant with the smoothing aloe vera formula that keeps you smelling good. Keeps you smelling good. Manscaped threw in two free gifts to their performance. Package 4.0, the Manscaped boxes, and the Shed travel bag. Keep yourself groomed from head to toe with the Sheer 2.0, a luxury nail groomer kit. This kit includes stainless steel, nail cutters, tweezers, and grooming scissors for your balls. Get 20% off with free shipping with the code HOTBOXING at manscaped.com, okay? Again, that's 20% off free shipping with the code HOTBOXING at manscaped.com. What are some fun stories or fun moments you guys have had together? You met when as, you know, a late teenager for you, but what are some fun... Oh, some- shit. I know y'all got some shit. So you never been to a Bobby Brown concert, huh? <laughs> nah, I've... Man... It was like I'm a, some kind of cult following. No, really, you guys had to see him in 87, 86, 88 yeah, when he was doing yeah. his thing, man. He was just like, man, you're a beautiful brother. Yeah, I like I like. Remember the time we was in Cleveland? Yeah. You had the Lamborghini yes. truck. Yes. And we, <laughs> we yes, went out, yes. we went out listen, late right, that night. Bobby don't do a lot of cocaine. I thought he was a monster with cocaine. <laughs> Bobby don't do a lot of cocaine. I, 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 fuck Bobby. He's just all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I, we, oh, fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. What year was this? This was, what, this right here? No, no, no. The story oh, you're talking the about story in Cleveland. we're talking it about, we was, right? it had to be 88, 89. Listen, Bobby only weighed, um, he weighed only two inches when I first met him. He was a little guy, man, doing it. Man, you have this. Put a car, listen, put him dancing on stage. Oh, oh shit. look at this. Look at this. Oh, nigga. You remember this very well. <sighs> Can we hear some sound with it? Yeah. Yeah, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I ain't seen this shit ever. Ever. How you gonna be jealous of somebody got all that love? They said that somebody would say you were jealous of fame. How you gonna be jealous of somebody? Look at this shit. How you gonna be jealous of somebody, Bobby? I don't know. Oh. Show the moves, nigga. Wish I can dance like that now. You I can do it, you but... You can, but it's not long. Yeah, just, so, question, did you invent the Roger Rabbit or someone, you got no, that from I, someone I just, and made it famous? I, I learned it and... And killed it. And killed it. So you put it on the map. That's when we went... You didn't see... We, we didn't see it in, in <laughs> okay. our videos. Okay. You know what I'm saying? You know, the um, the dance scene wasn't as 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 thick as it was once we came out. Mm-hmm. They only had Michael Jackson and... 
Michael Jackson wasn't doing the new dances. He was mm -hmm. doing Michael Jackson. See, that's why he had to leave. Look, Bobby the pelvis guy. Elvis <laughs> the pelvis. <laughs> You're like Elvis the pelvis. <laughs> hey, how that's what I try to put together as a, as a, um, a form. I I put Elvis, Michael Jackson, mm. Prince, mm. and Rick James into Good. one body. Great. And that was me. Do you ever often, because you're so we're, we're so in the moment all the time, just living, do you ever just sit back and think, like, I was really one of the greatest to ever do this shit? Does that ever, I know, I know you like to stay humble, but at the same time, like, do you look back like I was one of the baddest motherfuckers to ever do this? Um, <laughs> I say this shit to myself. Yeah, okay. You know what I'm saying? Say it out when loud I, when, sometimes. When, when I watch it, when yeah. I watch it. Like I was a bad, yeah. He was the I, king of all in the whole, come on, he, man. he had his own era. I'm Ninja already Jackson knowing. Era. He was the king. I'm already knowing. So I'm like eight, nine, ten at this time, <laughs> staying up and watching. All, shit, remember right? on the box was it with, with channel twenty three where you could request videos? We used to uh -huh. request your shit all. Pr promise you on the box, <laughs> forty nine cents get the videos. So we, I, I, I was all in the mix. I got to get this video from you guys. I, Is I'm the same way I've seen videos that I've never seen before. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? Where, where did this come from? <laughs> shit. I mean, I would have, people would think I have all my videos. I have nothing. What? I don't have no videos and stuff. All you gotta do is make an announcement like that and only tell them the to send it to I you. Own, only the ones that I own. But I'm, I'm talking about not from this videos, just me hanging out with people, my friends, my family. Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of them out there, though. I, I receive them every now and then. Oh, Japan. Yes, continue, brother. <laughs> yeah, we well, we had a, we had a great time. I thought it was good. I thought it was. Uh, I thought everything was gonna be fine, but but well, so what was too. Japan? So you were out too. there to you were out there to fight. Yes, and you were out there. And to... I was out there the night before his fight. I performed at the arena. The the Buster Douglas fight. Mm -hmm. Yes, motherfucker, the big one. Yes, so I went to Osaka after, and he stayed. You stayed in Tokyo. Yokohama in Tokyo. And I watched the fight at the Emperor's house in in, in <laughs> Osaka. Fuck going to it, huh? And we're balling back then, baby. Oh man, <laughs> yeah, balling. We have no idea. We're going hard. <laughs> we was oh, hard. That's, a, that's an understatement. Two of the biggest <laughs> stars in the world. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that shit was. How were you guys at that time? I was when I met him. I was eight, nineteen. No, but at the time, this Japan, like what? Earth? Twenty-three. I was twenty-three. Oh. Yeah. And I was 21. One. 21, yeah, I mean, I 20, 20, 21, 22. But at the top of the world. Yep. Yeah. That's at dumb. that age, just we coming both... at you fast. Nothing think, ooh, this shit was beautiful. Do y'all think about, like, what if, what if you guys grew up, because you guys are both wild boys, in an era with social media where there was camp from the jump, cameras on you, every move you made publicly, privately, they were, like, what would have happened to y'all two in particular? I don't know, but listen, I think we would have made a lot more listen. money. Oh, that's no question about that. Listen, no um, question about that. Viral <laughs> dances and all the other shit, but... We, we're just who we were. You right. Know? We're, that's how we were young. And nobody, didn't give a fuck. nobody made money like us back then fast. No. Mm. Real fast. Mm-hmm. Real fast. So leading up to the fight, what'd y'all do? Well, or I, what didn't you do? Um... Wonderful things. <laughs> <laughs> it's wonderful things. We were just up too late. I like, yeah. That's all night. One. And it was just like, I got to go to Osaka. And he was like, I got to go whoop this motherfucker's ass real quick. And that was it. You know, it was like, I was saying, you got to fight. He was like, no, this ain't, this ain't, this ain't going to be a fight. This is true. Mike was just like, I'm gonna go annihilate this motherfucker and I'll, I'll, I'll see you in a couple of days. Because we was gonna hang out again after that. And the inevitable. But then again, in 96, you hung out with me again and I was champ again. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? I was champ again. That's right. That's funny. He was always champ to me, though. Still are. Uh, no matter what. Mm -hmm. Mother shut of a bitch. So you let this guy beat you? Yeah, that's, that was really a bad business deal, yeah. Mm. That broke a lot of people. A lot of grown men cried. 
a lot I of cried kids, like a bitch. teenagers, I cried like, a baby like it's bitch. It's different. Like it hit different. Man. Like Mike, really? you was a superhero. Like you never expect. You know, I thought you would never lose. Nope. You have to, I, you have to see just, superheroes have to overcome adversity. Mm, you definitely That's did what that. it felt like to me. My superhero, my superhero, For real? you. I saw saw the shit and I was just like, oh fuck, no, this is this 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 can't, can't this ain't this ain't real. Can't be real. Well, this ain't real. It's supposed <clears throat> to be like that with me. I represented y'all. For real. No one cries when he loses. Mm. No, not at all. No, not not at all. And he lost quickly. He didn't have a chance to have be a heavyweight champion. But it's meant. No, he was meant. He had a wonderful night. Like you guys just played your best, and the other team just played a fucking good night. They had some luck too, and they just got you. That that's just how, how it is. But then the, the whole objective is to come back, stand up on your feet, to come back, to come back. You don't have to come back fast, but come back. You right. Know? Absolutely. I have the um. Excuse me. I always had the um. Y'all see me in here <laughs> breathing all the all the y'all right, smoke air. <laughs> so talk to us about mm, mm. Look at this, this one. Right this here. one right here. <laughs> oh, this is some funny shit. I was getting high back then. We were both getting high back Ooh. then. <coughs> this is Jimmy Kimball. Um, Halloween night. Me and Mike, and um, he was Dracula, and I believe I was fucking James Brown, and it was just ridiculous. I can't believe I'm doing this shit. I, look at me. <laughs> <laughs> I keep trying to touch you. You're like, leave me the fuck alone. <laughs> look at the outfit. Look Y'all at the wigs. Y'all was both on one? We, you guys were both on one right here? We were both oh, on two. We on, on a few of them. <laughs> We were on a few of them. Oh, These people shit. Are sick, dude. This is here. When was this? What year was this? Here, man. What year was this, Bob? This was, this had to be shit. <sighs> what year was it? 90s? 96? Definitely mm. 90s. Definitely 90s. Didn't we do it twice? I'm checking this out. I have no idea. <laughs> this is going to be interesting. <laughs> that shit was crazy, though. <laughs> I don't know how they got us to do that. Wait, we were high. The same thing, the Monster Mash? Yeah, the Monster Mash. I know he was so fucking high. He was laughing his ass off. <laughs> Smoke. All right, turn this up. <laughs> look, at, look at me. <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> 2005. 2005. Oh, that was a hell of a year. It's a hell of a year. <laughs> hate you. <laughs> hate your guts, this. <laughs> uh, what the fuck am I saying? <laughs> <laughs> you just said fuck it. Uh, match, 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 match. And but you got the whole white crowd dancing along though. Oh yeah, man. Everybody in there was all dancing along and clapping. Cause, the Cause everybody in there is hot. <laughs> oh, I got moves. Oh shit. Oh, shit. Did y'all rehearse that? Or was no, that we just... did this shit one time. <laughs> We saw each other. We saw each other in each other's costumes. <laughs> That's when you figured it out. We did the match. Oh, God. That's some sick shit. Was that beautiful, man? <laughs> that was beautiful, man. Oh, look at that one. No, go up, go up, go. Yeah, right there, dude. That's the every little step. That's where we met. Yeah. This is real talk, dude. That's history. Oh, funny I die. I did a bunch of those things. This girl's a big time writer now, too. <laughs> Go, Mike. <laughs> Go look, at me. I was, look at this guy. He practiced good. <laughs> yeah. 
Mike is in this bag right now. Look at him. <laughs> He's finding that beat. <laughs> Trying to. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> all. Fuck all of you. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, look, I got that move. Yeah. You got that. Nah, you on, yeah, you right there. Got to relax your face a little bit. Oh, I fucked up there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that dirty, huh? <laughs> These are dirty niggas right here, boy. Are those suspenders with hey, it's suspenders. Hey, that was a style back then. They had everybody wanted to wear the spandex with the uh, color down the side. Color down the Remember side. With the color oh, down the me. side. I, yeah. Look at this. Wayne thought he was really me, though. Yeah. <laughs> He said, this is my shot, huh? Yeah. Uh, Wayne went for it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here we go. I stole Mike's hat. I think I'm going to fly back and Bobby. I was about 30 pounds heavier than I was <laughs> in the video. <laughs> <laughs> Did I just fly across him? Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I gotta stop doing this bullshit. <laughs> that was the moonwalk, Mike. Yes, it was. <laughs> oh, Damn, God. yeah, we're nuts. Good old days. That was crazy. So, how did you get really? How did the the gummy come to existence? The hairdo. The hairdo was a mistake. Um, I was in the barber shop down in Harlem. Denny Moe's. You remember I'm Denny Moe? I know what's up with him. Uh huh. I'm in the barbershop and some girls walk in and it's just how we explained it in the movie. Girls walk in, Slip. then he turned his head, turned his head to look, and I turned my head to look and that was a signature moment in your career. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about how that went crazy because I mean that you went, had the whole world on that cut. That being. went that went so crazy, man. We we started we started um a trend of people just putting box, different box cuts in their hair. Then I went to um, Quincy Jones's house. I went to Quincy Jones's house and I looked at a picture, and it was his his grandfather, who had a Gumby, straight like mine. And I was like, "How this old man back in the days got right. the Gumby?" Yeah, so it just it just sun, it just let me know there was nothing. What's new. up with this right here? This shoot. Yeah, I don't know what this is. Oh, it's a new show. No, that's the old show, I believe. Yeah, that's the old show. Can we please that's have being the, Bobby Brown? Can we please have the new show? Hey, hey, Madonna. Did I hear Madonna's name right? I'm forgetting that. <laughs> <laughs> What's the best thing about being at the top, and the worst thing about being at the top? Best thing about being at the top is you you get to meet people like Mike. You get mm. to meet people that are, are are genuine in your life and uh, that are long lasting friendships. That was the best thing about being at the top. Um, the worst thing was spending the money like it wasn't gonna run mm. out. Because I never thought that, you know, one day, you know, I wouldn't have, you know, mansions right. here, mansions there, and 17 cars and whatever I wanted mm -hmm. at my beck and call. So the worst thing about it is the money and best thing is the friendships. What did you learn from your fall to picking yourself back up about yourself? <sighs> And I'm no quitter, mm. you know, um, resilient. Uh, I have a sense of uh, pride about who I am as a, as a person, you know. Um, whether I was high or whether I was not high, I still got the job done mm -hmm. in order to still be here. God still sees something in me that that is worth um, keeping here and Believing in. Mm. When you look back and see like the shows, doing the doc, it 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 
jogs old memories. Do you ever wish you would have did anything different at any particular time that like was really kind of could have took you a different direction? As I sit here today, no, Learn because from it. It, it 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 got me to where I am today. It got me here. It got me um, feeling better about myself than I felt in many many years. Um, I used to be beat myself down a lot, you know, because I couldn't get off drugs and I couldn't I couldn't stop drinking. You know, I would beat myself up about it. But it was just, it's just a part of fucking life, man. Right. And um, I had to realize that it's its a part of life that I'm i am going to struggle with the rest of my life. You know what I'm saying? Mm. While we were here earlier, they kind of, Mike and his wife kind of start reminiscing about stories about you guys. And there was, they kind of started talking about a story about how Mike was in rehab, your girl called, somehow you ended up in the same rehab, somehow Suge Knight came up somewhere, and it was just some shit. Oh, like, I want to hear about crazy. that story. Okay. Okay. You, you want to? No, 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 you no, please. You can do a good job. Please. 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 All right, so I, I'm in rehab, right? And I, you know, I'm one of those guys. I'm a, um, Hold on, before you get going, let me set the table. What year? I always like to know like the year and the contest because Suge was, was a monster this in a certain was era. In the 2000s. 2000. No, 15. 11 or 12? I don't know, but I Yes. Know. So between 2010 and 2012. So I'm fucked up too, all right? So dead. Go ahead, Bobby, please. We're both fucked up. <laughs> uh, we end up in the same place. Uh, both of us for the same fucking reasons. Just you can't know, stop. Just can't stop doing, doing what we do, right. what we did at the time. Um, I remember my wife showing up and um, saying, um, guess who the fuck I just saw at the gate? <laughs> and I was like, who, who did you see at the gate? She was like, Cat Williams and, and Suge Knight. I was like, well, what the fuck they, they doing here? And, and she was telling me, they're here to see Mike. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, Mike, I know you ain't trying to leave this motherfucker. Not right now. We, we, we're trying to get ourselves together. We're trying to get ourselves together. How long together. had y'all been there together for? What? Hold on. About a, it, it happened right away, though, It right? happened right away. <laughs> right when he first the... got there, like a couple of days after right. he got there. Were y'all like sweet mates or anything? Or like Next bunk, we, bunk no, mates? No, we no. were right next to one another, okay. though. But, um... When the guy told me Sugar was at the door, I was like, okay, cool. I didn't think, I thought he came to see Bobby. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he came to see Bobby. So I was like, all right, cool, man. And the next thing I know, everybody they, everybody got scared. You know, the staff, the, the police, everybody they were was shaking scared. Their shit. And I'm, I'm in there watching television, eating, I'm, I'm so fat. <laughs> and stuff. and um, he said, yo, Mike, um, can you please, can you be kind enough to go and tell Sugar that, you know, everybody's scared? He make, so I had to go down there and I said, he, they wanted me to go, but I couldn't go because everybody was scared and everything. I said, man, if I go, I'll probably go to prison or something because I probably was on parole and they had to send me there because I was driving drunk or high or something. Did Suge come to break you out or something? Suge was throwing shit over the gate. Suge <laughs> <Shug> was <laughs> trying to I don't get, believe that. He you was think? trying to get shit really? to him. <laughs> I believe. I believe Suge was trying to get him and little fucking cat was trying to get shit over Did the gate to throw into cat the over the gate too. <laughs> he was trying to get some shit up in there, man. And um it was just to me, to me it was just like we in here to get fucking healthy. We trying to get our shit together. Right. Okay. No, you got no, you got to hear this story. What? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so they you, we have a time a pass where I mean that we can go to the gym, right? And we go to the gym and work out. So I'm in the fucking gym, and Aaron Hall's there, right? And the singer? Yeah, he's there with some of I'm trying to lift weights, and him and a whole bunch of bloods are around, and he's talking. I'm like, what the fuck? And then in that situation, too, they said, Mike, um, can you talk to them, ask them to leave, man? Because they knew what gym I was going to, and they came there to talk to me. And like, and everybody, got, everybody was shook the whole auditorium, the whole gym, they were all shook. They saw all the guys that came in with their reds and shit. 
<laughs> what was the what was the gym we used to go to? I don't know, fitness center. Fitness center, shit, right? right there on uh fucking uh not Topanga, but Co Canoga. Venice. You remember? Venice, California. We were in Venice. No, we were oh, that was a, No, that was the yeah, other I one. We was that in, was we, the other time. We were in the we were in the mountains. Oh, right remember now. we was in the sober living house? Which one? Uh, Sino. Oh, Sino, yeah. That's, that, that's, um, that's oh, so you civilized guys in the rest That was civilized. We got a chance to cook. We got a chance to, you know, just be out and about, you know, walk. My wife walk had, by my bars, wife had 10 you know, years do whatever. Of, my wife had 10 years of a, a raving alcoholic and cocaine addict. Mm. 10 years of it. It's out of control. What made it, what, what, what was the turning point for you that made you realize that you need to stop? After my daughter died. And yeah, I believe that's when it happened. What about you, Bobby? Like a month after that, yeah, a month after that. Um, it was probably around the same time, you mm. know, um, that... Um, that I had to make the decision to to either live right or or die. You know right. what I'm saying? Because I felt I was next on the on the list of, of crazy, people man. people that was dying. I mean, in our industry, people was dropping like right. this. And yeah, I believe it was around the same time for me also when my daughter died. So your new show on A and E follows your current life, family. Talk to us about that. Um. Every little step was is about um, yeah, following my life as uh, my sober life, um, me living uh, comfortably with my family and the things that we take care of. My my wife as a, a manager, as a, a partner, as um, a wife. Um, also, my kids. They are you know into different different types of things, um, gymnastics and sports. And my oldest son, who's into singing also, him trying to um, become an entertainer, becoming a singer, uh, also a writer. He's How a great, he? he's 36. I believe my son is, don't give me the lion right now. <laughs> Um, Tell us about his skills. You see, he's writer. got major skills as far as his pen. His pen game is sick. Uh, he can write songs, you know, just off the top of the head without a piano, without music. He just comes up with melodies. He's excellent at that. Um, also, you know, you know, Landon, the big guy, big guy, yeah, bodybuilder, trainer, works out constantly. Very focused, uh, very positive. Very, very positive kid. Um, I'm very proud of him. Smart, I got two grandchildren. Um, so it's just about my life today, you know, and, and how um, everything coincides with, you know, what was before and, and what is now. And um, the change, you see the change in, in, in my being. So... That's what every little step is about. Mm. What's the, what was the hardest part talking about the drama? Trauma. Trauma. The hardest part talking about trauma, man. I mean, you know, um, you lose people in your life. I lost my, I've lost my mother, my father, my, my sister, my, my best, best friend and cousin. Um, all in the midst of five years. So it was just like trauma back to back to back to back to back. Um, that, was, that was hard for me. Um, this has just, just been so much shit from my past that I, I just, I pushed down in my gut and didn't talk about for years um, that um, I had to get out. You know, and that every little step is also about mm -hmm. that.
you know. It's always dope when you can, like you said, help yourself, your mental health, but at the same time, make it a business out of it as well. Because like I said, you're not only helping yourself, but you're helping so many other people because there's a lot of Bobby Browns out there that when I say that, I mean just have similar issues. Yeah. You know what I mean? That have the same. So, you know, you being able to pick yourself back up and 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 like you said, you're here for a reason. Yeah, you know by mean? the grace of God. Er, er, everything you've been through, you're here for a reason. So it's a beautiful thing. I love having somebody like you for a co-host. I just don't want to step on your toes too no, much because I don't want beautiful. you to come over here You're and swing on me. I'm like, oh. <laughs> no, I love that. Thing. Yeah, no, I don't want to step on your toes. It's I'm just, here to say the show. crazy shit. You have to be intellectual. Okay, and kind. see, yeah, okay, if you don't mind, man. Like I said, I don't want to fuck shit up. You know what I mean, I just like getting, I just like hearing y'all talk. Uh, the Whitney biopic is coming out in December. Yes, um, Kiki are you, Palmer. Are you a part of that? No, I'm not a part of that. Um, not at all. Did they consult you? Anything? Nothing? Talk about? No consulting. Okay. No nothing. People um, don't do that. They, don't want, they may have to pay them $20. They don't want to do they, that. They, they, they're they scared to okay. talk to me about anything. Okay. I believe it's um, it's her her people doing it. Okay. So it okay. is what it is, and we'll see it when it comes out. They have uh, Ashton uh, Sanders from Moonlight playing you. Is that what it's from? Yeah. They have any um, trailers? This is the young man playing Bobby. It's not Bobby. <laughs> uh, that shit was funny. You said earlier your son expected to meet uh, Woody. <laughs> like, yeah. you're not Bobby. <laughs> when you said your son expected to meet the character that played him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's not Bobby. <laughs> not Bobby. <laughs> it's not Bobby. It's not Bobby. If you knew Elvis, did you see it? Beautiful, right? I loved it. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. We, we, I must have watched it four times already. Really? Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, I kept falling asleep because it was, what, three hours long? It was awesome. Yeah, I loved it. Will you be watching? You like will you Elvis watch? back when you were oh. doing your thing, you were doing your strokes and your pelvis and your jiggles and stuff. And they I got arrested in the same yeah, spot. I know. Georgia, was In the it? same place that he got arrested. Yeah, with the Georgia. Georgia. Yeah. yeah, Columbus, Georgia. Interesting. At the Bible State. I was the actual sick, what, the second person after Elvis to get arrested there. Because mm. of your gyration. My time. gyration. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't My like pelvic that. thrusts. You mentioned uh, Michael Jackson was one of your influences. Did you have a friendship with Mike? Mike was really cool, man. He was he was he was down, down cat, man. Um yeah, he was good people's. You have a uh, friendship with Michael Jackson? I met Michael. All right. We're going to talk about Michael for a minute, right? Let's talk about him. He was performing in Cleveland. I, I just got off the plane with Don King. So I said, let's go see the concert. And so I went over there, and Don, he saw Don, and he gave Don the peace sign as we were walking through the crowd. And so I put my peace sign up, but then when he saw me, he put his down. I said, no, I know he didn't do that to me. <laughs> I just knew he didn't do that to me, playing me like that. So I said, cool. I didn't take it personal, but I, I felt funny about it. Right. So I went to the back. As soon as I go, I just beat Spinks in like a minute. As soon as I go in the back, <laughs> everybody starts coming toward me. The, 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 the drummer gives me his sticks. The, the girl take, we takes pictures. And Michael's standing over there by open door. He's standing like this waiting for a truck or a car to come. And I said, well, you know, I was being the boss. I said, well, let me just go over there and see Mike. And as soon as I go over there, and I go like this, hey, Mike, he said, where do I know you from? You look familiar to me. I said, this is beautiful. I ain't saying that, so, uh, I'm nobody, so it's a pleasure to meet you. I said, oh, that was beautiful. He just played me like a fucking fiddle just now. <laughs> For no reason, I didn't do anything to him. But he just played me. He's but, scared of you. But later in life, no, he played me. He ain't scared of me. <laughs> Look, I, he just came to me. I was the biggest thing in the world at that time. He came to me and I, I was going to shake my hand. He said, where do I know you from? You look familiar. So he was trying to act like he was the bigger Mike? Oh, he, he was that night. <laughs> <laughs> he was that night. I admired that move. That's funny. You got to be cold to do that. You have to right. be heartless to you do have that heartless, move. Yeah. Oh, you know the same thing. You have to be heartless. Uh, what an ego, huh? You have to be heartless. I love that about him, though. In your time, you pioneered the new Jack Swing uh, infusion of the hip-hop and R&B. How were you able to kind of collide those two? Uh, and be so successful at it. That's my love of hip hop and R and B. 
and getting with the right people that loved hip hop and R and B, like Teddy Riley, um, was one of the cats that that um, when we got together, it was just about something different. We wanted to make different different music. Um, we couldn't stay in the same genre right. as just R and B. You know, um, he had produced some tracks for so many other artists, you know, rap artists, and that's why I wanted to get with him because he had made beats. He he had did the show by Dougie Fresh. So mm -hmm. that's what made me want to, you know, do some tracks with him. And um, getting with him, man, that was, that was the best thing we did, man, because it was just, it just connected. It brought the two genres together, hip hop and R&B. And then that's what New Jack Swing is. When do you feel like you were at the height of your career? <clears throat> Damn. What year do you feel like that was? Or what wave or run, a couple year run or five year? You know, I know you had a from, long from run. From what, 87 to, what do you do, to, man? To 90, to 94? It was, yeah, it was from 94. Hard. It was hard, though. It was powerful. You know, I forgot. Bobby came to visit me in prison. Yep. I forgot to bring that one up. Bobby came to prison, had his wife, him, Whitney, they all came to prison to see me. I was so excited. Ever since, I, ever since that had made me... He called me a sissy because I, was, <laughs> because I was having a girl. Because Whitney was pregnant with a girl. He was like, oh, you sissy. I was like, fuck you, man. <laughs> I love you, I love you. <laughs> Damn, bro. You won a Grammy. Yeah. Every little step I take. Mm -hmm. What did that mean to you and your family? That meant everything, man. The Grammy, Grammy Award, it was like, you know, you I mean, have... How many only won one? I believe. Yeah. Yeah. That meant you, you've reached the right. plateau of of not ever failing again in music. You can always get a job with a Grammy with that under your belt. Mm. I mean, so day, I thought. I mean, one day you were being interviewed and you were saying, I, I want to start writing some of my own music as well. Remember that one? That what? That you wanted to start writing your own music. Right. Well, I, I, I've, writ I've written a lot of my music. Um, I've had other people produce a lot of my music. Um, I've always wanted to do my own shit. But, you know, that's that's why I left New Edition, so that I could do my own shit. Um, but I definitely had other writers, great writers that, you know, that have written songs to me that I don't I don't think I could have written by my wrote by myself, but I made the songs my own mm -hmm. by the time I got to them. So what do you think is your um, your highlight as a, a human being, a parent? Parent, parenthood. Mm. Yeah. yeah, being a father. How is that working out? That's working out wonderful. Yeah, seven one. kids uh, in my <laughs> lifetime. Six, seven, 13. Um, my daughter's 32, my son's 36, and I lost my two, my two bobbies, mm. so. Grand, uh, you grandpa? Two, two grandchildren. What's that like? That third, that's, man, what's, that, that's, what's it like then? That's incredible, that's incredible. Like you light up when I say that, like you smile, that makes yeah. you happy. Talk because to us about they, that. They, they grow up, they're growing up with my younger kids. Right. You know, um, my younger kids are aunties and uncles. Already, right you know? at six, seven, yeah, yeah. So that's a beautiful thing. They, 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 they growing up together. Me and my wife want to be grandparents too. Yeah, yeah. We can't wait. My, my wife is. She's made. She's just born to be that. It's a great parent. She's just Nurture. selfless. Yeah, it's selfless. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah, I was about to say. She's probably thing. gonna do. She's probably gonna do most of the work anyway because she's that way. Yeah. <laughs> I don't mind sometimes. You see, I almost forgot about one of my kids. Oh yeah, they, they're gonna put that. That's your conscious. Your wife is your conscious. Yeah, they keep you on top of your game. Mm -hmm. 
you mentioned your wife. Speaking of your wife, she wears many hats. How did the dynamic go from wife to manager? Or was it manager first, then wife? Like, how did that dynamic come together? I love this guy. Go ahead, brother. It was, it was, <laughs> it was manager first. Okay. Um, we got together um, and was in a relationship, but it was we started working together first. Okay. So um, that's how that started, and then. You know, love, love happens. You know, relationships happen. Relationships change. But um, I'm glad that we did start out the way we started out because it keeps our, our, our love strong. It keeps our, our, our bond uh, stronger than, you know, the average, you right. know, relationship, you know. Um, she's my rock, you know, and, you know, I appreciate her. So whatever she is. My wife is more popular than me. She goes in the bank, no one says hi to me. Hey, Kiki, 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 Kiki. <laughs> I don't want to say what I think about that on television, but they like, Kiki, bye, Kiki, bye, Kiki, we love you, Kiki. Hey, Kiki, hey, what you doing, Kiki? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Her too, hey, but hey, Alicia. Yeah, Alicia, Alicia, Alicia. You know Alicia, Alicia. they're not saying hi to me. <laughs> they don't sound right, man. I'm going to call right. your wife and uh, we'll talk about some business. She's always she's always at the bank, sending money to the bank and check the cashier, check back, withdrawing, depositing. Hey, Kiki, do you give these people holiday tips and stuff? Yeah. I wonder why they talk to you like that. I, I, excuse me? Well, I um, is that's proven today. What the hell? It was like a a bird. It was like a, a, a choir singing. Hey, Kiki, Kiki, bye, Kiki, Kiki, hey, Kiki, we love you, Kiki, bye, Kiki, hey, Kiki, Kiki, see you tomorrow, Kiki, call me anytime, Kiki, Kiki. Oh fuck! <laughs> I said, damn, my wife is powerful. Powerful women. Yeah. So beside every powerful man. So Bobby, is a Bobby, woman. we're about to cut this chapter in our life right now, and we're gonna give you a gift. Bobby, this is our um, a package that we're giving you for hot boxing. Yes. Our gear. Very nice. Very and nice. This is very, um, very nice. And Bobby, this is um, a package from Tyson 2.0. Okay. Don't be afraid to open it and show it to the world. Oh yeah. Okay. Yes, let the world see what we have here. I'll keep it. It's called Knockouts. We're going to knock you out right here. This is serious stuff, Bobby. What is it? It's Knockout. Mike got some uh, some gummy ears, pre Bobby. Pre-rolled? That are uh, bit, half yeah, bitten off. He's a pre-rolled? I couldn't believe it. Does he have any of those? Oh, they're here. So, the KL Blunt joints. You got the toad in there? No, not this one, but we're getting one soon. No, the toad's in here. Yeah. That's the toad. He made Mike bites. Yeah, Mike bites are off the hook. You do, do you, you don't do mushrooms, do you, Bob? No, no. I don't. <laughs> I don't do none of this shit, but <laughs> I'm, I'm, to I'm gonna keep it. That's what I said, keepsake. But for keepsake, you know what I'm saying? For the sake of the visit. For the gift. Yeah, sake of the visit. One day I might break down. I don't know. Nah, we don't, don't need that. Down, <laughs> we don't need that. <laughs> Hot box. That's a pullover, hot boxing. I got the tea, hot boxing. I think I'll wear this out. I'm I'm offering you a vacation to Switzerland with me. Um, okay. Um, we, we ain't going to rehab or no shit. No, we ain't going to no rehab. <laughs> it's not we can do a that rehab. Shit here. It's not a rehab. <laughs> but actually, we do that shit down the street. Actually, it's a party. Actually, it's a party. Oh uh, fuck. <laughs> we just chill out. We just oh. hang out. It's it's about it's about just having fun and and um, yeah, man, just having fun. Good food, good people, um, just good everything, man. I want you to come to in Switzerland. Switzerland. That's gonna be a tough one, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you know what happens? All when expenses I go, no, paid. I pay, but everything. I forget that, but know what happens when I go to Switzerland? I wind up getting awesome gifts from my wife, right, baby? Well, we're going. Oh, oh shit. Oh, there we go. It's, it's official. Beautiful. It's official. Michael B. <laughs> she said, Did you even care the day? Oh, they're going to show so much love to those people. Hey, man, 
What's on the schedule? What we what we doing? Fuck the schedule. You got to go to Switzerland. We got to go to Switzerland. You got to go okay, to Switzerland. I'm down it's, to 10 day, it's 10 days of just Ooh. glorious fun. God damn, 10 days. Can you smoke out there? We can do hot boxing out there. We can do hot boxing out there, right? Yeah, sure. Let's get it done. To go to Switzerland, I'm going to make Maybe myself playing. available. I'm... Yeah. Matt, you and your wife are Yeah, our, our wives are Germany friends. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm an international Man. player, nigga. Yeah. We are all I'm an international player. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm a world traveler. I'm bi coastal, okay? Uh, bi world. Let's get it done. Yeah, Hot I'll box coming to you live from Switzerland. Switzerland. Oh, man. Oh. I'm gonna have count such and such on the show. We're gonna work it all out. Like, <laughs> I'm serious. Watch when we get there. Where can people find you? Uh, find you today? Right here. Talk to these people right here. Yeah. Oh, where can, what you got going on before people, before we let you get out of here? Where can they find you? With anything else you're working on? You well, want to talk course, about? Well, of course. Well, of course. I'm doing my annual um, gala and golf tournament. You'll be there. When and where? Because I golf. You'll be there. So when? Tell me. Uh... October 16th and 17th. We will be there. Uh, we love you, Bobby. Yes, we want to be It's there. about, um, well, you know, we have a, a charity um, about uh, domestic violence, um, which is how my daughter passed. And this year is going to be a special year. You know, um, we've got a lot of people coming out. I'm looking forward to seeing you two guys out there. Um, it's a great event, um, and I'm just proud of it. I'm really proud, you know, to be able to help out um, women and men and children that uh, have been in domestic violence uh, situations and giving them a place to go, give them a place to... Um, to go to when they're in those type of situations. Um, and I'm really proud. My wife does a great job. My family does a great job putting these things together, and um, I'm just really happy about it. Well, the charity is called Bobby Christina Serenity House, and um, we have um, two teams that we've connected with, um, one in Boston and one in Atlanta. And... Um, we're really proud of the work that is being done right now. Oh, man. Congratulations. Thank you. That's a beautiful thing. If, if, if people want to get involved or be a part of it, where can they go for more information? BobbyChristinaSerenityHouse.org um, and go to the website and it'll give you all the information. Me and Mike going to be there. Absolutely. Yeah, it's going to hey, be fun. can we keep you full time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're my guy now. It's just me and you. Right? Just me and you. Come on, man. Hey, this is, I need this guy. He knows how to handle this stuff. Yeah. yeah I, just, <laughs> I, just, I, just, I didn't I need know you wanted, you wanted me to drive the truck. Oh, I didn't, I didn't I want to step on no toes. Though. You I mean? Need this so. Guy so much. Oh, I love this guy. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, hi. Uh, Close him out, Mike. Take us home. Once again, this is another end of this episode of Hot Boxing. I'm Mike Tyson. I'm Matt Barnes. And this is Bobby Brown. Thank and, you. And we are out. Out of here. <laughs>